Welcome to Sebastian Christian Church. We are so thankful that you have joined us online today. Psalm 66, 1 through 4 reads, Shout joyful praise to God, all the earth. Sing about the glory of his name. Tell the world how glorious he is. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Your enemies cringe before your mighty power. Everything on earth will worship you. They will sing your praises, shouting your name in glorious song. So church, or if you're visiting with us for the first time today, we just invite you right where you are, in your living room, in your car, wherever you're listening today, just to join us as we worship our Lord together. He is worthy. Join us now. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm Tiffany. 
If this is your first time tuning in, we want to thank you for choosing SCC's online gathering. We invite you to click the Connect With Us button in the chat window. It's our desire that you would feel valued and loved through this experience. Our Financial Peace University class has begun. For more information or to sign up, please visit our website or call the church office. Here at SCC, it is our desire to love God and love others. And if you've decided to partner with us in spreading the gospel locally and globally, we invite you to prayerfully consider giving online by clicking the Give button in the chat window. If you've been encouraged by this online gathering, please click the Invite button in the chat window to share this experience with others. SCC staff and leadership are praying for you during this difficult time. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us with specific prayer requests or needs by emailing us at info at sebastian.church. Please continue checking your email for our weekly updates. We are so excited to connect with you today, and we invite you to continue to sing with us. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and who have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path. one 
Amen. We pray that no matter where you are right now, that that's, that's your heart. We're not sure exactly what you're walking through. But we've talked to many of you throughout the weeks here at SEC, and we've had connection with many of you. And we know that each and every one of you are dealing with some different circumstance in life right now. Some of you may be dealing with some financial concerns. Others may be dealing with some health just risks that are going on. You know, being separated through this pandemic may have caused us to have some anxiety or some isolation and depression that we're battling with. We pray today that you've been able to lean into God through this time. And through that time, you discover that he is able. He is a God who is for you and he is with you and he will lift you up if you'll just trust him and give him the opportunity to do so. And so we're going to sing this next song. And it's an opportunity for us to praise God even in the difficulties, to praise God even in the storms and struggles of this life. And we raise a hallelujah to him. We raise our voices. We lift our voices in song to the King of kings and the Lord of lords because he is worthy. So would you join us now as we do so? Sing it with us. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a Church with your voice, let's lift it up together. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. And I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a
God. Glory to you, Father. We raise a hallelujah. We lift our voices to you, God. No matter what our circumstances, you are faithful. And so our hearts are just swelled up with gratitude right now. And God, as someone is sitting on the fringe right now, just wondering if you're there, God, I pray that they feel your presence right now. God, that they truly understand that you are a God that is for them and that you have something greater for their lives in store if they could just accept that and trust you right now. And God, for those of us who continue to put our trust into you daily, thank you, Father. Thank you for meeting our every need. Thank you for showing up in every moment and every circumstance. And so, God, we just thank you for this time that we can give back to you and sing and worship you, God, because you are worthy. And so right now, Lord, I pray for our pastor because our hearts are ready to hear from you and you want to use him as your instrument to speak to us. And so, God, help us to hear clearly from your word, hear clearly from this message, God, exactly what you want. And, God, as each week we pray that we wouldn't just simply be hearers of your word, but we would be doers. We would live it every day in our lives so that we can see you take root and change and grow things and make us healthy, Father. We just thank you again for this time. We give you all praise and glory and all honor. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so very much for joining us today online. Church family, I'd like to just take a moment and, um, you know, we cannot wait here at SCC until we're able to all come back together and to worship together and be on campus together. But in the meantime, here's what we're asking. Would you please be in prayer as we are currently putting together a plan to make that happen? Um, as soon as we feel that it is prudent and um, allowed so that we can, uh, again, just come back together to worship our great God. Well, if you're joining us um, for today for the very first time, we are in the second week of a brand new series that we just launched called Margin. Margin. Now, margin is the amount of space available beyond what is necessary. Each and every one of us, whether we realize it or not, we live our lives by margin, by margin. And so last week I talked about the important areas of life where we need margin, and today we are going to be talking about learning to create margin in our time. Because if we don't learn to do this, we're really not living the way that God has intended us to live. So let me start off with a very sober reminder. In fact, this reminder came to me as I was doing personal devotions this past week on Monday. Now, a devotion is what uh, Christians do to help us grow closer in our relationship with God. We read scripture. We spend some time talking to God in prayer. And during this time, this past Monday, I was reading Psalm chapter 90. Psalm chapter 90, verses 10 and verse 12. And it just spoke to me as I was preparing for this message. I'm like, this is incredible. What what a coincidence. This is what God does. This is how the Holy Spirit moves. It says this in verse 10. Our lives last 70 years. Or if we're strong, 80 years. So it's just starting off saying, you know, here's the average lifespan. Most people live into their 70s or their 80s. But many of us, we don't even get there. Because of health issues, violence that happens accidents that happen in in people's lives. Some people don't make it to that. But on average, it's what it says. But, uh, I'm sorry, but even the best of them are struggle and sorrow. Maybe you've noticed that in your own life. That even in the best of your years, man, there's still some struggles that go along. There's still pain that happens during that time. Indeed, They pass quickly, and we fly away. Now, if you're in your teens and you're in your 20s, maybe even your early 30s, this may not be incredibly relatable to you. Because I know, just looking back at my life, I thought I was going to live forever at those ages. That's just kind of natural. It's just kind of what we do. 
But the older that I get and the older that you will get, you will learn to discover that the years pass very, very quickly. But then verse 12 says this, and it's a plea to God on behalf of this issue. Teach us to number our days carefully so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. Lord God, teach us to number our days. You see, you and I have a shelf life. We have only been given so much time in this life. In fact, there are two truths that are inescapable. It's it's true of all of us. The first one is this. Our time is limited. That's exactly what Psalm 90 is telling us, that our time is a limited amount of time. And second truth, the second truth is this. We will spend all of our time that we're given. We will spend it all. There is no such thing as leftovers when it comes to our time. We will end up using it all. And unfortunately, for many of us, we have a tendency, we don't set out to do this, but we have a tendency to sometimes waste time or to become so busy that we miss what's important in front of us. How many of us, how many of us would love to say, I wish I had more time for dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. What's your dot, dot, dot? What do you wish that you had more time for? Where do you wish you could spend more of your time? For some of us, we would love to have more time to spend with the people in our lives that we love. Our spouses, our family members, our friends. If you're part of a church family, those people, neighbors, whatever that looks like. I would love to have more time to spend with the people that I love. And if you are a Christian and you're desiring to grow in your relationship with God, you may be asking, you know, or you may say, I would love to have more time to spend with God. I would just love to spend more time with God. Well, all of us, all of us wish that we had more time to invest in these, these critical areas of our lives, don't we? But you know what the reality is? The reality is, even if all of us had 25 hours in a day, somehow we were given that extra hour, it's highly unlikely that we would spend it on those things, right? We would find some other way to fill up our schedules. The reality is, because of the culture that we live in, that we become very overwhelmed with time. And whatever margins we have in our life sometimes seem to to vanish and shrink because culture pulls us off center. It's like a vehicle that is out of alignment. We just kind of go off center. And it pulls us off center into living marginless lifestyles. So last week I talked about how margin is simply the distance between what you have and what you need. And this is huge when we're talking about things like time. Having margin in our schedule means that we have extra time. It means that I can arrive five to ten minutes early to a meeting or to an activity with my kids. It means I have time to help out at home. I have time to help my spouse. I have time to help out my kids. I have time to do chores around the house, to work outside. I have time to help my neighbor. I have time to to maybe spend after work to be able to um, help out there. It means that I have time to listen, that I'm not in a rush when people uh, sit down and they have really important things to share on their hearts. That, That may be within our families. It means that we have that time to give an ear, to actually listen. It means that we have time to be interrupted. To be, to, uh, that our kids come up to us and say, Daddy, play with me. 
Daddy, can we go this place? Can we go to that place? Have a margin means I, I have time to do that. Time, it, it, it means that I, I'm actually glad about that. It means this. When I have margin in my schedule, it means I actually have time to rest. That I actually have some time that I can just relax and maybe even reflect. About 10 years ago, when I first became pastor of SCC, I, uh, if I'm just being transparent, I, I was really nervous uh, about being the lead pastor. I, I've always been a student minister. I was never the individual that was in charge, and, and so there was, there was just this weighty responsibility. So I spent a lot of time um, on my knees just praying, God, give me wisdom and discernment. Help me to lead God and direct um, your church here at SCC. And one of those times, I ended up um, going down to Wabasso Beach. It was uh, late afternoon, and I was sitting at the beach, looking out over the water, and there was, there was a storm out, out in the Atlantic. And, and, and I always think that's kind of cool looking. And you could see some lightning and stuff. But the storm came, fairly, uh, came and went fairly quickly. And after the storm, there was this double rainbow. Two rainbows just, just close together, arching out over the water. Now, Christians interpret the rainbow to remind us that God always keeps his promises. That God always keeps his promises. In fact, we tell our kids that every time we see a rainbow. Kids, don't forget, God always keeps his promises. And in that moment, I was reminded that God had brought me here for a reason, that he will keep his promise, and he will use me for his purposes as long as I am faithful to him. Now, what would have happened had I not made any time to go to the beach that day and to just try to relax and to reflect? Think of the blessing that I would have missed out on. So margin is having a great amount of time with those that you love, and it's having plenty of quality time with our creator and the sustainer of the universe. It is so important that we create margins in those areas. The trouble is, Margin is what most of us do not have or we are struggling to maintain or we've just never created to begin with because we are so busy doing what we think is important. Well, Paul speaks to this in a letter that he wrote to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 5. Now, Paul wasn't specifically talking just about time, but certainly that played a part of it. Paul's main point was if we are going to follow Jesus, we must learn to live consistently in following him. And he says in chapter 5, verse 15, pay careful attention then to how you live. In other words, inventory the entirety of your life. And pay special attention to how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time. Taking advantage of opportunity to do good as often as you possibly can. Why? Because the days are evil. Life's against us that way. So, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. See, here's the reality. If I do not pay careful attention to things like my time and my schedule, am I making room for God, then what's going to end up happening is I'm going to get sucked in to culture, which is going to pull me off course. Because, you see, there's this natural pull away from the most important 
things in, culture, in, in our lives from culture, isn't there? You've noticed this in your own life, haven't you? You've noticed this in your marriages. You've noticed this in your family life. You've noticed this when it comes to school and studying and extracurricular activities. That our default stance, our default stance is living without wisdom. In fact, instead of living wisely, we have a tendency to live very foolishly. Think of the the foolish choices. I don't necessarily just mean wrong choices. I, I just mean the foolish choices. I could be spending time with my kids who are only in my house and under my care for a certain amount of time in their life. Instead of playing video games or watching TV or wasting time in any other way. And so God warns us to fight against that pool. To be aware that it's there, and to be very careful of what we say yes and what we say no to. So this verse reminds us to be very careful how we live. To be very careful how we plan. To be very careful about what we bring into our schedules. Because you see, when it comes to time, we add, 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 and many of us Never subtract. And so Paul is reminding us, be very careful how you live, or culture will simply drag us away from the things that we say matter the most to us. And into this marginless lifestyle that so many of us today struggle with. So maybe what would be helpful is to ask an incredibly important question of ourselves. Is it wise? Is it wise? In light of blank, now whatever that blank may be for you, in light of where I'm at in regards to work, in light of where I'm at in regards to school, in light of where I'm at in regards to extracurricular activities or hobbies or family responsibilities, whatever that looks like, in light of those things, is it wise for me to add this to my schedule? To go ahead on through it. Is adding this, is adding this thing wise? Is spending this time wise? In light of all those things I talked about, family, our current situation, our financial situation, is it wise to take on something else? You know, I can remember um, when I first got married, leading up to that, I decided to buy a brand new PC, which 25 years ago was pretty expensive. Now, there's nothing wrong with buying a new computer, right? There's nothing immoral about it. There's, there's absolutely nothing evil about it. However, what I came to discover very quickly is at that time, it was not wise for me to have spent the money in that area when I needed to put, put it in another area. Namely, that I was getting married and we were going on a honeymoon and I was going to need the cash for that. I made an unwise decision. And it stung for a little while. I wish I would have asked myself that question. Is it wise to buy this computer at this time? Not is it right or wrong. Not, is, it, is it a horrible thing? No, listen. Can I do it? Should I do it? Is it wise? Well, in light of the fact that life is precious. And, and that it's short. I mean, the older you get, the more we discover that, right? And that every day is a gift from God. In fact, if you're a Christian, you believe that, right? You believe that every single day that you wake up and you take breath into your lungs and your heart is pumping blood throughout your body, it is a precious gift from above, right? In light of that fact, is, is it wise that we invest our time 
in dot, dot, dot. Be very careful, Paul says, then how you live. Because I think Paul understood our natural inclination is to waste time and allow it to fill up where we lose time for the things that we say are the most important. So, what can we do to avoid this? Because I think many of us are in this trap, right? I've I've done it. I've filled up my schedule with way too many things. I know many of you have done the exact same thing. In fact, some of you are struggling with that right now. One of the things that we have to learn, it is so simple, it is so easy to remember, and yet it is so hard to do. Especially for those of us that are people pleasers, boy, do we wrestle with this one. Boy, do we struggle with this one. But you know what? As Paul is telling us to be very careful how we live, for some of us, we just have to learn to say no. To say no. To say no to many good things so that we can say yes to the best things. To learn to say no to the good things so that we can learn to say yes to the best things. I love how Paul puts this. In Romans chapter 12, the second verse. In Romans 12, verse 2. He just simply does this. He says this. Don't be conformed to this age. In other words, listen. For those of you that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, that are following Jesus, don't allow culture to mold you. Allow God's Spirit to mold you. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life to to renew your mind, to change your mind, so that you may discern, to be able to tell right from wrong, what's wise, what's unwise, what's good, what's foolish. Be able to discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. See, as a Jesus follower, what is best is intimate time with God. If you're trying to follow Jesus, if you are serious about your faith, let me just ask you this question. How much time do you put into spending time with your creator and the sustainer of your life. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I call it a life verse for me. This has been an important verse for me ever since high school. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it simply says this, but seek first his kingdom. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things. What was Jesus talking about before this? All the the cares of life will be provided for you. See, this is a verse about priority. If I'm a Jesus follower, I'm claiming that God is number one in my life. And if God is going to be number one in my life, I have to seek Him first. But as long as my schedule is full, as long as I am so overwhelmed with all the cares of life, guess what's going to get crowded out? And you know this is true because this happens in your life as well, doesn't it? But intimate and consistent time, realigning daily, with God is so important because by nature our hearts are out of alignment. See, as Christians, we believe that we live in a fallen world that has been impacted by sin, that it permeates literally every area of our life. And that if we don't take Paul's advice to live wisely, to be careful how we live, if we don't Take Jesus' advice 
to seek first God's kingdom, we're going to be out of alignment. Daily, regularly, we have to align our hearts to the Word of God. Allowing His truth to come into our lives, to permeate our lives, to spend time with Him and His presence. The trouble is, so many people spend such a few amount of time per week not only hearing from the Word of God, but enjoying His presence. So a question for you. What is the last time? What is the last time you spent more than just a couple minutes, one or two minutes, five at most, in deep, thoughtful prayer to your Creator and the sustainer of your life. Boy, Todd, stepping on toes, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Because you see, this issue is huge. Jesus speaks to what is countercultural to most people. Counter to what they consider to be normal. Well, sure, Todd, you spend your time in in prayer and Bible study because, I mean, that's what you get paid to do, right? Wrong. No matter what career I'm in, I have to learn the value of spending daily time with God or I will very quickly get out of alignment with Him. You see, this is normal for anyone that claims to follow Jesus. But in our world today, We keep thinking that something like that is abnormal. But let me tell you what's normal today. Divorce is normal today, isn't it? Over 50% of marriages end that way. You know what else is normal? People that are overwhelmed in life. That's normal today. You know what else is normal? People that are overworked. It's causing stress. It's causing anxiety. People are miserable. Sure, they're busy. They're busy, but their lives, their lives are empty. That's normal. That's normal. That's normal for most people, isn't it? People that that take medications. People that go see counselors because they have allowed their time to get so full of what they think is important that it's wrecking their lives. Now, I'm speaking to those of you that consider yourselves Christians and followers of Jesus. I'm speaking to you directly right now. Let me ask you this. Do you think it's wise to neglect time with God daily? In light of all that we've just talked about. Do you think it's wise? Let's talk about being busy for a moment. You know, if you talk to most people today, what you will hear, I'm busy. I don't have time for such and such. I can't do such and such. And what we have to understand is that busyness does not necessarily mean that we're being productive. Busyness and productivity aren't necessarily going hand in hand. There are so many things that we can get caught up in. But busyness does not equal importance. Busyness does not equal meaning. I know plenty of people that are plenty busy that feel that their life has absolutely no meaning. Do you know people like that? Has that ever been true of you? You know, I would argue for many people, I would argue for many people, they're being robbed of a life of meaning. Not because... Not because they're not committed, 
but because in many cases they're simply over committed. And they don't have enough left over for what really is important. If you ask somebody, or if someone asks you to do something that's not going to be the best use of your time, in light of that fact, you need to learn to just say, no. No, I don't have time for it. You don't have to give an explanation because no is a complete sentence. Hey, Todd, do you think you... No. No. Now listen, again, if you're a people pleaser, and I have that tendency, that is a very difficult sentence to speak, but it is oh so important. Oh so important to us if we will ever have margin in our life. In Matthew chapter 11, I love this. If you're one of those that you just feel completely overwhelmed by your schedule. I love what Jesus says here in verse 28 and 29. And I read this last week, but this is huge. Come to me. This is an open invitation. Jesus just says, come to me. All of you who are weary and burdened. In other words, you've got packed schedules. You are living a marginless life. Life is beating you down. And I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me. In other words, think about, read what I say and then do it. Because I'm lowly and I am humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Here's what Jesus is telling us. He doesn't want to add to our schedules. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to pile more on to us. He says, you come to me, you accept my invitation, and it's in me that you will find rest. And yet for, all, for many of us, we, we ignore that advice, don't we? You know, most of us, when we get busy, and when we lose margin, we oftentimes feel like we can't afford to take off and have a day of rest. But what's really interesting, in the Old Testament, God told the Hebrew people, listen, you are to work six days and rest on the seventh. Work six, rest and relax on the seventh. And God showed that pattern even in creation, creating six days resting on the seventh as a pattern for his creation to follow. He even went one step farther. He told the nation as a whole, he said, listen, work the land for six years. Work it for six years. And then on the seventh year, you're not allowed to plant. You're not allowed to harvest. You just let the land rest. Take the year off. Could you imagine that in our culture today? Do you think anybody would heed that advice today? There is no way. No way would people do that today because it's not normal. And yet, and yet, I can't help but think of the story of the third largest quick service restaurant in America today, Chick-fil-A. When Truett Cathy started Chick-fil-A, he started, and he's made very no, publicly known, I will not be open on Sundays. Everybody told him, listen, you're going to go out of business. There is no way you can survive. He said, no, I, listen, I, I'm going to follow this principle that God has set up for us, and I, I'm not going to open on Sundays. You know what, folks? Chick-fil-A is doing just fine, isn't it? They're doing just fine. See, God is trying to tell us you don't understand. If you'll just work the land for six years and give it a year off, you're going to have more than you need. Listen, if you will follow and heed my advice, God says, I'm going to give you that rest that you require. I'm going to give you that ability to relax. But the problem is, most of us, 
We don't really believe that. You know what the issue is? The issue is a faith issue. It's a principle of faith. And that's the rub. That's the real rub, isn't it? If we're being honest, most of us, when it comes down to why we don't follow God's principles, it's because we lack the faith. We really don't trust that what God says is true. Where's that gotten us? We talked about this last week. The busier that we get, the less time we have for the most important things. Our relational intimacy begins to decrease. Decreases with the people around us, and it decreases in our relationship with God. I mean, I can't tell you how many times down through the years that I've run into people and I'll say something like, man, it's great to see you. I haven't seen you at worship in a while. Yeah, I know. I'm busy. I just don't have time. I'm too busy. There's too much going on at work. Too busy with my family. Too busy with my hobbies. Too busy with my lifestyle. I simply can't do that. That's the faith issue. See, you don't truly believe that to rest will make you more productive and more spiritually healthy. It's a faith issue. You're not arguing with me. You're arguing with God. And when it comes to our relationship with God and our time, He is the first thing to go in our lives. When we're that complacent. But if you're a Jesus follower, do you think it is wise to not honor God with one of His top Ten Commandments to rest? Do you really think that's wise? So here's the deal. Here's the deal. You think that you don't have time for these important things, but the reality is you don't have time for the most important thing because you're out of alignment with God. That's where it starts. Here's how you can know if you're out of alignment with God. It's very easy. Do you obey Him? In every area of your life. Do you obey him in the areas of marriage? Do you obey him in the structure of your family? Do you obey him when it comes to dating and who you're dating? Do you obey him when it comes to finances? Do you obey him when it comes to schedules and time? Do you obey him in every area of your life? Do you spend any meaningful time in prayer? I don't mean just at the dinner table and right before putting the kids to bed. Husbands, do you ever pray with your wives? Families, do you ever gather together for prayer time? Does God's name roll off your tongue when you're talking to people other than OMG? Are you using the gifts that He's given you To serve his kingdom? What might happen? What might happen if you get yourself back into alignment with him? By creating margin in your life. By spending real intimate time with God daily. By giving yourself intentional time to rest. To actually unplug. Might mean turning the phone off. Putting it in another room. Walking away from it. So that you can recharge. What might happen? So here is my challenge to all of us. Because 
this is an all of us problem. This is an all of us problem because of the culture that we live in. I want to challenge us over the next six weeks to honor God in these two areas of our life. Spending time with Him every day. Start small. Doesn't have to be a long time. Start with 10 minutes. If you can't find 10 minutes for the creator and the sustainer of the universe, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. I don't have any answers for you. And free up some time in your schedule. Maybe learn to say no. Maybe drop some good things in favor of the best things. And then see how God begins working in your life. Heavenly Father, when it comes to our time, when it comes to our schedules, when it comes to how we spend it, Father, if we're honest with ourselves, we, we just kind of go through the motions that culture teaches us to go through. And for many of us, God, it's leading to bad health. It's leading to burnout. It's leading to what we consider to be most important in our life, those people that are most important in our life, Father, to get set aside or pushed to the back burners of our lives. So, Father, forgive us when we make those choices and help us. Help us to honor you by committing ourselves to spending time with you daily. Learning to say no when we need to say no. And being willing to give up some of the good things that we have in our schedules for the best things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus followers, some of you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to realign yourself with God's best for you. And we want to help you with that. We want to encourage you to do that. Please, feel free. Reach out to us if you have any questions. Maybe maybe you believe in God, but you you don't... but, But you know deep down that He really doesn't have your heart. You're, you're kind of sitting at a crossroads right now in your life. And you have a decision to make. We would love to help you with that decision. Just simply reach out to us. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to share what God has done for you through the son, His Son, Jesus. So that you can come to experience a freedom that you may never before have felt. Thank you so much for joining us today. Church family, this is a great opportunity for you to, after we finish here to spend a few moments celebrating what Jesus did for you by taking communion together as a family. You can pick up those elements at the church. There's devotions online for you at our website as well as our YouTube page that you can use to get your hearts ready. So as you take those elements, the bread that represents Jesus' body and the cup that represents his shed blood on the cross, do so in remembrance of what Jesus did on your behalf. God bless. Thank you for listening to today's message. If you'd like to partner with the ministries here at Sebastian Christian Church or find a community through a life group, you can visit us on the web at sebastian.church.